Hi, my name is uh, Don Bubar. I'm president and CEO of Avalon Advanced Materials, a company that's been in this space of non-traditional commodities like lithium for 27 years now. I'm an exploration geologist. I've been in uh, this exploration business in Canada for 47 years now, actually, and started Avalon at a time when I wanted to do something entrepreneurial on my own after having worked for bigger companies in the past. But unfortunately, in 1995 was when the BRIAC scandal happened that made it very difficult for junior companies to uh, raise capital for gold and other traditional commodities. And that was how, coincidentally, was when the resource at Separation Rapids enriched in lithium was discovered. And it was staked by local prospectors. And I thought, that's an interesting opportunity to do something different with a new emerging <laughs> commodity like lithium. And maybe it was a bit early then, but it looks like our time has finally come. And, well, it's, and so can I ask that? So Avon, in, in it, it's been around for what, 20 years or so, is that right? 27, started 20, in 1995. Right, so actually started then, 20, okay, okay, fine. And so I get the waiting game and the markets have got to be right, et cetera, et cetera, but have you been working solely on the Avalon project for the 27 years or were you looking at other things as well? Well, one thing I learned early on is if you're going to try to produce these non-traditional commodities like lithium, it's all about timing and being able to react to a sudden surge in demand for the product created by new technology requiring it. And you got to be ready to go when that happens. <clears throat> so I realized that maybe we should create a diversified asset base because it's hard to predict where the next big demand will come from. And that's what we did and acquired a rare earth property and other properties given us exposure to a broad range of these uh, emerging new materials and never expected that um, they'd all be in demand at the same time, which is a circumstance that we're in now. Right. But obviously lithium is one that uh, we're making our top priority because there's so much interest in it. Right, okay, so lithium's obviously the, the commodity of the moment, well, battery metals more broadly, but the, the commodities of the moment. Um, but along the way, so how, how, much, how much money have you raised across that time um, or brought into the company in any, any way, shape or form? Well, I'd have to um, do some math on that, but um, we've raised um, somewhere between 100 and $150 million over the years. Right, okay, so you ba basically, you know, now's the time that you need to kind of, like, well, a little bit of like playing, playing catch up in terms of valuation, because um, where are we at like 50 million at the moment? So um, I, I'm intrigued by how you move this thing forward, because you talk about multiple commodities. Does that mean multiple assets too, or are we you know, pr pretty much focused on separation rapids? What are, what are we looking to? Well, we are now, although 12 years ago, we were focused on rare earths and we were an early mover in rare earths. And then when China imposed the export quota restrictions, um, we were very well positioned to take advantage of that. And uh, the market was looking for companies with advanced projects and we had one. And we thought we were in good position to get it into production to create that new supply chain in North America. Well. We almost got there. We had a feasibility study done and we were ready to go. But to this day, I think China saw us coming and they relaxed the export quotas and we couldn't get the ball over the line. I think it feels like they're still in the position to do that. Um, some some companies are very nervous about that one. I, I didn't realize there was a feasibility study on that one. So are you tempted to kind of monetize that in any way, shape or form now to focus, so you can focus properly on the lithium component? Would you be able to? Well, that, we still have that asset, but um, uh, we were looking at a different model of there's some near surface, smaller resources that had potential for recovering the uh, <clears throat> magnet rarers, neodymium, praseodymium, and uh, had interest from an Australian company. And they wanted to, uh, they really liked the idea and they wanted to work with us on it. At the time, I decided just to carve that piece of the property off, sold it to them with the vision that they could get the ball rolling there for us. And then we could come in behind that at some point down the road once um, they get it started. Because it's all about getting the supply chain started, establishing the processing capacity and then generating the local demand. Then you can grow the supply. 
Right. So, so, um, so you, you, did you manage to do that or did that not, not work out? I'm trying, what I'm, what I'm trying to do, I, I want to get focused on the lithium, but I'm sort of intrigued about all of these other options that you've got, optionality that you've got around you, because, uh, rare earth is hot at the moment, as you, as you say. Um, I'm trying to work out how, can you monetize it today? Can you get some cash in today or not? Well, we're basically just being patient there and waiting for them to get the ball rolling. And then we could probably develop our resource along with their initial production. So we'll okay. see how that okay. evolves over time. Okay. But the other thing that we've been uh, trying to do and for some time now is show how historic mine sites, closed <laughs> mine sites with, with big piles of waste and tailings often contain other elements that had no value decades ago in the mine was developed, but do today. So these closed mine sites must be looked at as opportunities to recover valuable critical minerals from the waste and clean up the mess while you do that. And um, it's been a struggle to get the regulations to adapt to that and recognize these sites need to be now looked at as opportunities. But um, make a progress on that too. But but the you kind of need kind of I mean it, there's a business there, but it, it, that that's kind of like it's a, it's a, it's a small business, and you know in terms of you know the economics, you want to focus on something big option. I could guess the lithium, and maybe maybe it's a better place to start is with, with the lithium project and trying to understand where you are there because a lot of this work was done. You 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 telling me before we started, you know 20, 20 odd years ago. Um, the exploration happened then. You're not an, an exploration, typical exploration story here. You would position yourself as what? An advanced lithium development company that now we understand what the needs to get the uh, operation started. And it's all about creating the, the midstream processing capacity so you can show end users in the battery and manufacturing sector how you can produce the derivative product that they need in their manufacturing process. So uh, that's what we're focused on now. And um, we're in pretty good shape to be able to be the first in Ontario now to get it, uh, get it started. And um, <clears throat> we're, that's, we're now in the process of acquiring land, got an offer to purchase on a site, an industrial site in Thunder Bay <clears throat> to um, establish it there as a regional facility that we can get started with supply from our separation rapids project and then become a buyer of concentrates from other new producers because there's lots of lithium pegmatites in uh, northwestern Ontario. And not everybody's going to be able to afford to build a billion dollar process facility, or whatever they're going to cost, to make the battery material product. But if you have one that can help get the other guys started, these can be developed at a small scale. So, so what, what exactly are you looking to produce? Like, like, um, is, is it you know technical grade carbonate, or is it a concentrate, or at some point you have you know, aspirations to be um, you know battery grade hydroxide? I mean, what are you aiming for? Hydroxide seems to be the one with the most demand here in uh, North America right now. So yeah, we're oriented towards making lithium hydroxide monohydrate. Right, and how do you? Do? I know you've got the, you've got a. Um, uh, relationship with SR, and I, I know them from oil and gas days. But um, what what ex are they going to help you technically? I mean, what, what's the what's the relationship with them? Basically, we uh, want we're trying to attract an investing partner because as a small cap public company, finding half a billion or a billion dollars to <laughs> invest in that ain't easy. So we needed an investing partner, and we were introduced to them by an agency here in Canada that does that. And um, they were interested because I think they're trying to diversify their whole business and start to show how they can get more involved in clean green technologies and reduce the reliance on fossil fuels in India as well. And um, that's the idea. They're still interested, but trying to get a deal done when the partner's on the other side of the world and you're just meeting by Zoom calls ain't easy. <laughs> No, no, I know, I know, I know that. And like I said, like, I know that from oil and, oil and gas days um, when we co-invested in some some projects. But um, I, what, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to understand is the 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 scenario you're painting is one where there's going to be some technical know-how required in terms of 
moving from advanced development into being a producer and then into a marketplace, you've got to have kind of route to market and so forth. So are you looking for partners to be able to help you deliver on the technical side, on the balance sheet side, in terms of the marketing side? I mean, what, what what's the plan going forward? Well, finding an investing partner was initially the priority, but obviously you want to get firmed up on offtake demand too, so you can um, decide on what's an appropriate scale of the operation. And um, that's what we've been working on lately. And the, the demand interest is just growing all the time now here in uh, North America. So that's not an issue anymore. It's just deciding who you want to partner with on that side of it and getting a deal done where you've got a firm commitment on the offtake and know exactly what they want in terms of the product specifications and agree on pricing and go from there. Right. And, and so to, so you probably did say, and I, but I didn't pick it up. So you, you are looking at producing what, technical grade carbonate and, and eventually the, uh, hydroxide. Hydroxide eventually. Right. Okay. We, so that's some serious investment along the way. So, but so in terms of monetization, you know, surely there's some sort of short term, um, gain to be had by, because if I note, um, I won't name them, but you know, a, a another lithium, North American lithium, um, developer um, has just signed a deal with Ford, and that's for pretty much technical grade carbonate because Ford is saying we, we would rather secure our supply chain, critical in our supply chain, and, and worry about um, maybe the hydroxide component by partnering with one of their battery manufacturer partners. So, do, do, you, do you sort of how, how are you viewing the kind of the environment as it, as it were for because say, the hydroxide seeing things quite expensive, it seems very technically driven, and you are going to need someone to kind of come in and you know maybe deliver that part of it. So, but, but your short term um, goal is what? Well, I think we've got enough interest now in the hydroxide product to justify moving ahead, and uh, we needed to identify an appropriate site to build it in Thunder Bay. We now have that. We've made an offer to purchase, and got that accepted. And then um, it's a matter now of finalizing some of the, um, the d design and the flow sheet. And um, we think we've um, got most of that sorted out now. And then we can hopefully get into construction mode in um, early 2023 and perhaps be in full production in three years after that. Okay. And so, and so who, who did that work? Which, which consultants did you use on that? Well, we have internal capacity on that. <clears throat> Okay. So we've been looking at a number of um, different processes and um, there's now quite a bit of innovation on extraction technologies. So we want to try to take advantage of uh, whatever is um, looks like the most efficient way to do it in terms of both costs and environmental impacts. And um, a company called Metso Autotech has innovated a very interesting looking uh, process flow sheet that um, we're keen to look at implementing there. Okay, we, we, we know them. Um, so you're talking about the, the, the clearly there's, there's the getting it out of the ground and then there's the processing it, but getting it out of the ground, easy. I think we both agree on that, or relatively easy. It's the proce processing bit. You, you feel that you've kind of, you're, you've been looking at options there for you that make you, lead you to feel comfortable that you're gonna be able to produce hydroxide. That's what you're saying to me, yeah? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, so, so some big, big. The other thing I like to point out is mm. that our resource has a high purity lithium aluminum silicate mineral called petalite. Yeah. And the demand for it as an ingredient in certain high strength, especially glass ceramic products, is growing too. So we've got the opportunity to serve that market as well. And that gives us a possibility of sort of generating some near-term revenues by starting to produce that before we get the battery materials um, plant up and running. <clears throat> right. And so you've, you've recently raised some money via convertible um, and about three million bucks or so. Is, is that is that um, closed now? That was just uh, working capital for the short term. Right. Okay. And that's allowed you to do what you want to do. That was back in May, right? So. How 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 are you with the money at the moment? Are you, you, you kind of good? Are you gonna gonna need to raise later this year or not? Well, we do need to raise more money, but um, 
we've got uh, we're trying to do um, debt financing because of the fact that we're building an operation that's going to start generating revenue and buying land is you can go to a lender for that too. Yeah, and, and not, but don't you need uh, some shareholders? Absolutely, but, but don't you need and the same with the convert? I guess that was the intent there. But um, don't you need some sort of binding offtake agreements to allow you to kind of get the debt component? And won't you also need to raise an equity portion as well? We probably will eventually, but in the short term, we do have good interest in providing uh, debt financing. Right, but you, so you're saying you get 100 percent debt financing on, on the project? Well, for the short term needs. Right. Okay. Okay. And that that usually and that's sort of usually conditional on what? I mean, what 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 are they? Because debt debt guys are um, one typically slow moving, and, and two, they they do like security over something. So what what are you offering them? Well, when you're buying land, um, then it, it could be security against the value of the, the land, right? But for <clears throat> the other funding we're looking for is to acquire a demonstration scale. A process facility that uses dense media separation and sensor-based ore sorting to produce the pedalite concentrates, do it efficiently because the first step in being able to supply the glass ceramics market is being able to produce a fairly large sample so they can try it out and make some of the product and make sure that it's going to um, meet their requirements. So that's key step for us. It's not a, a huge expenditure to uh, finance. It'll be in the order of maybe eight to ten million Canadian dollars. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And just so, just so I understand the, the the study process. So I, I know there's a 2016 PEA. With, were there? And you're going through a feasibility study now. Have there been other studies along the way? Um, you talk about an internal capacity, but I'm, I'm wondering what sort of the market facing documentation looks like. Well, we started doing. PEAs and PFSs back in 1999. <laughs> so we've looked at a number of different models and the most recent one was in 2018 where we were focused again on producing the pedalite product for the glass ceramics market as step one and then step two being able to come in behind that to produce some more pedalite to, to provide the initial feed for a lithium battery materials processing facility, and that's still the model that we want to apply now. Right, but but what have you done in terms of the economics? Obviously, the last two years have been shocking in terms of inflationary pressures due to supply chain, more recently sanctions and so forth. So the technically, I guess you're saying to me you're confident about what you need to do to kind of feed into that, um, um, I think it's typically gorilla, gorilla glass market, isn't it? Um, where are you with the economics and, and, and the sensitivities around that, given the current environment? Well, um, if you take the model that we d developed in 2016 on just producing lithium battery materials and apply some price level that's more consistent with current prices, then you get um, a net present value in excess of a billion dollars. Right. But the, the, that, that's, that's on the revenue side. What about on the cost side, though? I, I, how are your margins? Do you feel like so confident about your margins that you that you're? Oh yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So the tell me about that. Look pretty good. Well, especially on the um, producing the concentrates for sale to glass ceramic manufacturers, because uh, if you use a, a relatively simple passive process like dense media separation, it's basically a gravity type process. It's not that expensive, and. Uh, the value of the product now has gone up along with all other forms of lithium. So it looks like we'll get a value for it that's at least five or six times what we, our costs are. <laughs> right. Very good margins uh, potentially there. Right. Okay. So g g give me a sense, therefore, you're going to need to raise some, some money in the, sh in the short term. You are, and you think that's going to come from debt. Um, can you give me sort of the next 12 month runway in terms of what you think the deliverables are? Just to understand the, the pace, because you, this is an advanced development project you're telling me, right? So um, I want to understand yep. the pace at which this thing's moving and you can be potentially when you could be producing, which three, you know, three years after the end of you know, ne next year. Um, how do you finance that the whole way along? So people like S SR are good to have on the books if they're contributing and um, cash, if they want to be involved and you, you're having conversations elsewhere with regards to uh, finance as well? 
interests. Oh yeah, I've got lots of other interests, but one other significant uh, opportunity is to take advantage of government funding programs because both the federal and provincial governments are prefer- prepared to provide financial support for getting these supply chains started now. Right. And Very significant funding. How do you tap into that then? Basically just make an application. Right. But but, but, but saying saying what? Into, but saying what? I'm, I'm intrigued because like people do come on and talk about the, the the different types of funding that that are available, but not everyone gets it. So what would the government or would it be? I, I presume it's a provincial government you're talking about here, are you? No, no. Both provincial and federal governments okay. are very interested in um, supporting getting this supply chain started. Okay, and it's not going to be difficult because basically we've talked to both governments and including the ministers and they're saying, hurry up, get that application in. We got the money. <laughs> so tell so, me so, this, do you, do you then, do you apply for that individually? Given that we're talking about supply chain, clear word being chain, do you, do you co-apply with other companies within that chain or partners within that chain um, or do you just do that on your own? I mean, how does it all get joined up, I guess, in terms of the joined up thinking, also the joined up cash flow? Well, we would be doing it uh, ourselves because obviously um, they're supporting Canadian companies um, doing this. So, um, But showing that we have access to the balance of the capital required from other investing partners is important too. So they should show that um, their funding will definitely help get us to the finish line to make it all happen. Right, okay. And okay, understood. So and just coming back to the numbers again. So in terms of these additional critical minerals, are you treating them as byproducts or potential byproduct revenue streams? Or do you think you 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 can do what you did with the um with the rare earths component and get other companies to come in and, you know, Work, work with them in terms of um, allocating capital, one, one to find it and two, possibly pro- process, process it together or at least plan it together. I mean, how, how, how does this money flow with it, with it, all the different um, commodities that you've talked about during the course of this conversation? Well, there's quite a few potential byproducts in the lithium resource like ours. There's always cesium and tantalum that can be recovered too. And like Lepidico are doing, they are finding it, the cesium is often associated with lipidolite, one of the lithium minerals, and so it could just be a byproduct you can extract along with the lithium once you get it um, uh, into solution. And then there's always tantalum in these resources that can be recovered as well. And then the um, K feldspars often contain rubidium, and that makes an interesting product for other ceramic applications. So there's lots of potential byproducts. But your focus is lithium. That's what you're working towards. And well, that's the one that you can get the most attention on um, in terms of finding the capital, right? But like you talk about cesium with anybody out there, they say, cesium, what's that? I've never heard of it before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that why Eslor actually came in originally? Were they after the cesium or were they, they saying, no, we want to get into the, the, the lithium game too? I mean, I know you said they want to be maybe step away or not be associated so closely with the fossil fuels component, but cesium is used in the oil and gas game. It's just lithium. Just lithium. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So when are you going to be able to tell us about these other conversations and when do you hope to close down one of these other fun, uh, conversations with a, with a financial partner? Well, it's uh, we're hopeful that'll happen uh, in the next uh, few weeks here. Oh, that that close? Okay, I think so. <laughs> you never know. You, Hard you, to know. Yeah, you know, you never know. Um, okay, so if I'm if I'm an uh, investor looking at, at this thing, so what, what's what's the big pitch to me? If you get if you're two minutes to sell this to me, why is this thing going to why is this thing still a growth story after all this time, and why is it going to take off now? Well, basically, I like to point out that um, we're pretty undervalued compared to most other publicly traded uh, lithium equities out there that are at most of them are at an earlier stage. And I think the main reason is that, um, A, 
we did all the work on the exploration over 20 years ago, so we haven't had the high frequency of news flow that early stage exploration companies have. And B, because we're diversified in terms of our exposure to non-traditional commodities, we don't have the word lithium in the name of that company. So that means 99% of speculative investors have no idea we have an advanced lithium project. <laughs> There's an easy fix for that, Don. <laughs> <laughs> no charge for that advice. Um, Avalon Lithium. Um, okay, so people may not be aware of, of of what you've got, but that doesn't change the the problem that you've got, which is to say, right, okay, th this is a growth story. Right. Why? And now's the moment. Why? That's that's what I want to hear from you. Yeah. Well, it's basically a uh, growth story where we start off at a modest scale. We'll start having revenues next year, and then we'll be able to increase it over time by expanding the production into the battery material sector and recovering more valuable byproducts from the um, the ore that we're going to take out of the ground there and then use the capital to expand our businesses on other projects that we've had in the background for many years to diversify our production into other important critical minerals.